आप हैं जेनी वेब और इनसे सवाल पूछने के लिए परवीन मिर्जा हेलो जेनी बिफोर वी बिगिन आर डिस्कशन आई थिंक इट विल बी अ गुड आइडिया वी कुड सॉर्ट ऑफ डिसाइड ऑन विच एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक द द एरिया विच रियली कंसर्स आस द हाउस वाइफ इज द इकोनमी द प्रॉपर यूज and i would like to ask you you know what tips you have well there's there's lots yeah. of tips of course yeah. um it does depend what you're doing mm -hmm. but i'll try and think of some that perhaps would relate to every day mm -hmm. uh, first of all if you're using an uh, electric oven uh, it's quite a large box in which to cook and so consequently it do, it is a rather a waste of money just to put one item in the oven mm -hmm. if you've got the oven on then put lots of food in at the same time and do what one would say is batch cooking so in fact you could cook for today and tomorrow at the same time or if you have a freezer then freeze the food down mm -hmm. another area for economy uh, a lot of people are rather tempted to put a tiny uh, milk pan on a radiant hot plate boiling plate so you've got this tiny pan in the middle and lots of electricity has been wasted from the heat outside so in those instances it's worth using a pan that will in fact cover the the di the plate itself rather than waste it um all ovens of course thermostatically controlled so it's not necessary to use too high a temperature one can always use a lower temperature and perhaps cook more slowly many cookers do have uh, eco uh economy ovens you could call them but very often it is uh, cheaper and, and less time consuming to use a small oven instead of a large oven if you want to boil water it's always cheaper to use an electric kettle rather than putting a pan on the top of the cooker if we're on the subject of general economy i think that one must remember that you don't want to lose any heat in a house and so therefore it is well worth paying a little bit of money out to have the house insulated and this can be done in several ways you can put insulation in the roof or double glaze the windows or stop drafts so that the heat doesn't go out um in other words you put a tea cozy over your house really uh and, and the curtains also help the curtains do help mm -hmm. indeed rather than leave the curtains open at night time if you pull them that that too helps to insulate mm -hmm. there's lots of areas for for insulating a house where you can save quite a lot of money um give us some example you know uh insulating a roof perhaps um well the cost will depend uh, upon the size of, of the house mm -hmm. but a semi detached house you could save anything up to 15 15% mm. uh, of electric on your electricity bill if in fact you put insulation in your roof mm -hmm. uh so that is That's quite, quite a lot mm, isn't yes, it 15% yes. mm. and it's not very much the mm -hmm. cost of uh, putting it in is not very much mm. and it's a very easy job and mm. uh, suppose some people are not in in a position to uh get this uh, insulation done now has the government got some sort of a provision where they can apply for a grant uh, yes i believe so uh, of course we're talking mm. nationally and yes, so there are variations mm -hmm. but it's always worth inquiring at the local electricity board and they will guide people if they can't help then they will put them onto the people that can help in this area mm -hmm. One thing I did forget if I may mention on the economy mm -hmm. side if anyone has water heating and they haven't lagged their mm -hmm. tank mm -hmm. then this too should have a lagging jacket a cover for it because a lot of electricity is wasted otherwise mm -hmm. um the cost there well to have a tank is about uh, a, a lagging jacket is about 8 to 10 pounds mm -hmm. but I think that's very important if we're talking economy mm -hmm. it's an important area um on the safety side there's there's all sorts of things first of all I think uh, if we think of the house as such Uh, a lot of people go into homes either new ones or ones mm. that've been built for many years and uh, they switch on the lights and they will work mm. so that's the main thing but what they don't realize is very often the wiring is very old and should in fact be checked or indeed replaced mm. um i know myself when i went into my home it looked super on the outside but once i had somebody to check the wiring i found i had to have it rewired mm. so that that is very important just walking in it doesn't mean to say because everything's working mm. that it's safe Now is it because of the danger of the fire or it's uh, because the it will consume more electricity No yeah. no that you're all right on the consuming of electricity mm. but you wouldn't be all right if you didn't have a house left it is fire That's true. um yeah. which could yeah. could occur mm. and uh, so often you can't see what is wrong so therefore one so should have somebody to check it uh, What will be the step that means we should when we have bought the house and we are moving into a new house we should 
ring up the local e electricity board and ask them to come and carry out a check? Yes, yes they will do a cursory examination mm -hmm. so that they will, well most boards will anyhow, mm -hmm. and you, they come and have a look and, mm -hmm. and just look very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, or they can have a proper estimate where they look into it with more detail, but at least it would be a start. Uh, and mm. of course, the wiring in some of the, the houses is very antiquated, and you have 15 mm. amp and, and 5 amp plugs, whereas mm. 13 amp, of course, are much more modern. So it would be worth doing that. So, so perhaps that's the major thing. And then if we talk about everyday safety, mm. it's like safety in the home with anything. One has to be aware of it. One of the commonest uh, faults of people um, would be with plugs and sockets. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably know that you can put an adapter onto a socket outlet and have two or three appliances running at the same time. But what a lot of people don't realize that the size of the socket is such that you shouldn't put more than a certain amount of electricity or a certain number of appliances, mm -hmm. total wattage onto it. And uh, therefore, you don't put in an adapter with three plugs and another adapter. So you have this rather pretty sort of Christmas mm -hmm. tree effect. It's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. If you have to start doing that, then one should really have more sockets installed in the house mm -hmm. or in that room. Right. Uh, another, it's naughty again, but so many people I know do it, uh, they trail flexes across a room. They have one socket, perhaps, at that side mm -hmm. of the room, and they want to use something at this side, and so they run a lead right the way across the room, which, of course, is very dangerous. Added to which they do sometimes extend the lead, and if it's not done correctly, then this too could cause an accident. Um, do it yourself is so popular nowadays, mm -hmm. and it is—it's nice to do, be able to do things oneself. But of course, I, if it's somebody that's an amateur, then of course it can be a dangerous occupation, mm -hmm. and it's well worth going to seek advice. And I think another area which is terribly important um, would be that of putting on plug tops, mm -hmm. because there are certain colour codes that one must observe, mm -hmm. and. Uh, certainly if it's put on the wrong way it's not a good practice and can be dangerous. Sure. I think those are the basic sort of things that one would have to do with wiring. And such. Uh, also um, you know the normal accidents which happen in the house and which you know we often hear is the use of uh, electrical uh, appliances for heating like electric yes. heaters and all. Yes. What precautions would you suggest that we take at home? Well, uh, first of all, if an appliance is being bought, I'd mm. say look for the BEAB approval. That's a label mm -hmm. that means it has been tested and approved for safety. So that's the first consideration. Um, by law, all fires must have a, a, a guard of a certain dimension. Mm. If there are young children in the house, then it is worth having an extra guard, as mm. one would a fire, just to make sure they're kept away from it. Mm. Um, again, you don't have long flexes on mm. these fires and certainly any appliance should not be taken into a bathroom it's mm -hmm. very dangerous practice mm. and um, why well because all appliances or nearly all appliances should be earthed and there is a three mm. core on it now in a bathroom you've got water mm. and we all know water and electricity doesn't mix very well together mm -hmm. and it is possible and, and there have been there are not many accidents but where people have not observed the rules mm -hmm. they've taken heating appliances or even televisions into mm -hmm. the bathroom and they've been having a bath and they've fallen in not the people, the mm. television, yes. and so on. So it is never ever take um, an, a portable appliance into the mm. bathroom and never allow anyone to install a socket outlet in the bathroom. Yes, I see. You can have a special socket for a shaver, mm. but that is specially wired. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, I've mentioned earth thing, uh, all major appliances do have three wires mm. and should be connected with the three wires. Mm. You mustn't cut off the earth wire because otherwise you haven't got any earthing then. Now, heating a house with these mm. appliances is terribly expensive. Uh, wouldn't you suggest some other alternative we can use, you know, instead of those bar heaters and things like that? Yes, probably the, the most inexpensive of them all would mm. be to have storage radiators mm. because they are like central heating. Mm. Um, they're not too large now, they're nice and slender and they are more controllable than they ever were. They, the beauty of them, of course, is that you can also move them with you. So if you want to move house, you don't have to leave your central heating behind. Mm. If you haven't got any in your new house, you can take it with you. Also, they run on uh, very cheap electricity. So instead of paying full price for electricity, you can pay less than half price for it. 
uh, one bar, we'll just take a bar fire. I think that probably means more to people, but if one took a one bar electric bar, the, um, the average price of a unit, which is how we buy electricity, mm -hmm. is about four and a half P. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have this storage type of radiator that I'm speaking of, you in fact only pay uh, well, 1.8p, but in fact you would say it was one and three quarter p. It's very much cheaper. Added to which, uh, the benefit of this particular rate, and we were going to talk about economy in a moment, mm. but it does mean that for seven hours, usually over the night time period, you get less than half price electricity anyhow for everything else that you're using. Mm. So it's a very economical rate to be on. Mm. And if you haven't got storage radiators, you can still have it. So this is an area that is worth investigating. Yes. Ye to bahut hi achhi baat batai Lalita inhone hamare behnon ko shayad pata nahi hogi. Ye bhi hum in baad mein ek saath batayenge aap puch lijiye inse questions. Nee um apart from these uh, another question that comes mm -hmm. to my mind is you know not everybody can afford to pay electricity bill these oh, days yes. with all the uh, you know recession and I everything know. else yeah. unemployment. Now is there any way such people who are victim of this that they can't pay their bills can have uh, help given to them? Yes, mm. well, there's lots, lots of areas of help here. Mm. First of all, I think if we talk about unemployment, mm. if somebody becomes unemployed, then it's well worth going to their electricity board shop immediately to mm. find out mm. what they can do to ease the situation at mm. that time. Mm. Um, if they have a chance to think about it, then they can, they can choose many different, one of many mm. different methods. Uh, there are basically four ways in which one can pay for mm. electricity. Um, first of all, I have to remember, because there are so many ways, mm -hmm. you can have a, a budget account where you arrange to pay a certain sum every month. So the electricity mm -hmm. board will say, you use so much electricity for a year, mm -hmm. they divide it into 12, and then you just arrange to pay that, that sum every month. Mm -hmm. Then once a year, of course, they'll just check up that they don't owe you any money, mm -hmm. or you indeed owe them money. The other way is to buy saving stamps. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go into any electricity board shop and buy stamps and put these towards your electricity bill. Mm -hmm. But in many areas, the sub post offices will also sell stamps as well. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Pardon. Um, then there's the prepayment meter mm -hmm. where you can put money in the slot, mm -hmm. which, which is, is another useful way. But yes. of course, it's not always convenient. It, it's, got to be in a position where it's secure and mm. people can't take the money fr from it. Um, you can play by credit card if you wish. Thank you very much Jenny. There were such useful uh, tips and hints you gave us. Our Behno Umid hai ki aap ko isse bhot faydi huyenge aur jaisa ki humare in karmachari ne kaha agar aap apni jankari aur padhana chahti hai to apne hi mohalle ke kisi electricity board ke daftar chale jaiye aur aap ko bhaan se saare malumat mil jayenge. Lijiye aap aap baaki ka program dekhi. Another Gaba on BBC Two next Wednesday at ten twenty. And of course on Sunday morning, BBC One will have Naizindagi Nayajivan starting at 9.35. Well, here on BBC Two now, it's time for Play School, a little earlier than usual, and it's presented this morning by Lucy Skeeping and Ben Bazell. <laughs>